Hey everyone, this is David Brown with the migration update for the second half of November 2025 from the Ashland Hawkwatch. We are located in northern Delaware in the USA, and today is November 30th, meaning that today was the last day of the count, so the season is now officially over. First, we'll take a look at some of the photo highlights from the past couple weeks, and then we'll take a look at the totals for November as well as the season as a whole. We'll start off with a large dark raptor. This is an eagle. And looking at the overall plumage underneath, we're not really seeing white patches. There's this one dot in this one wing. Not really sure what that is. Maybe a bit of a white base to the tail. But looking at the overall shape, we see a relatively small head and we do see a golden nape on this bird. So this is a subadult golden eagle. Here we have another eagle, but on this bird, we see a lot of splotchy white on the underside of the body as well as throughout the underside of the wings. We can see that the trailing edge to the wings has two different ages of feathers. We have these longer, more pointed ones, and then we have some darker, shorter ones, which are the ones that have already been replaced one time. And if you look, you'll see that this bird is actually carrying a stick. And if we look at the head of this bird, we see that it's a relatively large head. This is a second year bald eagle. I'm going to flip back and forth a few times between this bald eagle and the golden eagle, and I want you to mainly focus on the size of the head. So the bald eagle here has a very large head. If we go back to the golden eagle, much smaller head. Again, bald eagle, large head. Golden eagle, much smaller head. That's something that's very useful for identifying them at a distance. Here we have two large sparrows that are very deep red in color with some gray highlights. These are fox sparrows. Uh, uncommon species that we see towards the end of the season. Here we have two hawks flying together. If we start with the top bird, we see that it's larger in size. We see that more standard buteo shape. On this one, we see a dark belly band compared to the clean upper breast. We do see dark patagial bars and there's no dark trailing edge to the wings and no red tail. This is a juvenile red tailed hawk. Taking a look at the bottom bird, much different shape, much longer tail on this bird, kind of a flying cross type shape, wings held out very straight, relatively large head, big rounded tail. This is an adult Cooper's hawk. Here's a species none of us expected to get for our Delaware list this year. This is a yellow-headed Caracara, and this was not at the Hawk Watch, but rather this was in Wilmington along the Christina River. And this is a species that is normally found in South America and Central America. It's a non-migratory species. So the speculation was this must have been a ship-assisted bird. Um, people kept mentioning banana boats that were coming up that dock in Wilmington. But in any case, somehow this bird ended up in Wilmington and it was a slow day at the Hawk Watch. So we ended early and four of us jumped in my car and we drove to Wilmington to see this beautiful yellow-headed Caracara. In this photo on the left, we have a juvenile red-shouldered hawk, so it gives you a bit of an idea of the size of the yellow-headed Caracara, and they're perched on top of the B&M meat plant. And people keep speculating that it rode a ship to get here, but personally, I think it ran here. In flight, they're quite striking, and in fact, they have pale crescents that are somewhat reminiscent of our red-shouldered hawk. And this bird was seen for a couple days and then it disappeared, which was unfortunate because it was seen early on the Saturday morning and a lot of people were coming from out of state to see this since it is such a mega rarity, but it wasn't seen at all after that. It wasn't seen after 9 a.m. on Saturday. It wasn't seen Sunday. And as far as I know, there haven't been any reliable reports ever since. So whether it moved on or died, no one knows at this point, but I was lucky enough to get over and see it. So very cool bird and an unexpected lifer, the yellow-headed Caracara. Back to the hawk watch. Here we have a small migrating flock of snow geese. And this was the only migrating snow geese of the season other than we had one individual mixed in with a flock of Canada geese a few days before this. But it just seems like in recent years, the snow geese and tundra swans and things like that, they're not pushing south until December. So we're just not really seeing them in November like we used to at the Hawk Watch. Here we have an adult red-shouldered hawk, and this was one of 275 red-shouldered hawks that migrated over Ashland on November 20th. That was the highest single day ever. In fact, it was more than twice the previous record. The previous record was 118, we got 275. So a huge migratory push, 
And then a few days later, we actually broke the season record as well. So this was the highest single day for red shoulders and by far the highest season as well. Here's a pileated woodpecker or pileated if you prefer that pronunciation. And I had to include it since it gave us such a nice look. And we know it's a male because of the red mustache. Here we have a small raptor. We see rounded wingtips, so we should be thinking hawk rather than falcon. We see a long tail where all of the tail feathers are pretty much the same length, giving it a very squared off appearance. We have a bug-eyed appearance to the face, kind of a big eye on a small head. And we see that the dark cap extends more of a hood as it extends all the way down the back of the neck. So hooded appearance and the orange barring indicate that it's an adult. This is an adult sharp-shinned hawk. Here we have a medium-sized raptor that has a fairly long tail and very long skinny pointed wings as well. This has a very distinctive plumage, overall white underneath with black wingtips and black secondary tips. This is an adult male northern harrier. And for comparison, here's a juvenile northern harrier and note that owl-like facial disc. Going along with what I mentioned for the snow geese, this was the only tundra swan of the season and it's very unusual just to get one. Normally we would see a whole flock of them. They're a little bit camouflaged, but in this photo we have two adult red shouldered hawks perched in a tree yesterday morning. We knew the weather was going to be lousy today, so we treated yesterday as if it was the last day of the season, which it ended up being. And we were rewarded with one final golden eagle for the season with this nice sub-adult. Notice that nice white base to the tail, as well as white patches in the wings. And when it turned and showed the top side, we saw the tawny bar, which indicates that it's not a juvenile. So we know it's not an adult because of the white in the wings and tail. And we know it's not a juvenile because of the tawny bar. So we can age it as a sub-adult. And it really gave us a nice extended view. I spotted it way out in front and we had it in sight for around 15 or 20 minutes and it ended up soaring right overhead in the beautiful morning sunlight. So there was only a couple of us that got to see it, but for those of us who did, it was a really special moment as we wrap up the season. I did go up to the Hawk Watch this morning to do some morning birding and clean up a little bit, but as you can see, snow moved in pretty quick our first snow of the season, and then a transition to rain and that lingered throughout the entire count period. So there was no count today. Taking a look at the Hawk Count website, if we look for the second half of November, you can see we had that really big day with 371 migrants on the 20th. That was the day with all of the red-shouldered hawks. Besides that, we had a couple days with over 100 migrants, but otherwise a lot of medium days, you know, 30 birds, 50 birds, 80 birds. So pretty typical that it starts to slow down as you get into the last few weeks of the season. You can see we didn't even have a single falcon migrate during the second half of the month. You can see we had four golden eagles total, 16th and 17th, and then we had two in a row on the 28th and 29th to end the season, bringing us to a season total of 12. Otherwise, typical late season stuff, turkey vultures were moving, um, bald eagles, red shoulders, red tails, Things like Cooper's Hawks and Sharpies were continuing in small numbers, but just a lot of stuff winding down as you get towards the end of the month. Our November total ended up being just under 3,000, which you can see that's more than last year, a little bit less than the couple previous years, higher than some years, lower than some years, so kind of right in the middle of the previous November totals. I may make a video that goes into the totals in more details, but if we look at the overall season total for this year, we had 11,632, which was more than last year's 8,000, but significantly less than the two previous years with 24,000 and 21,000. So overall, the season was probably below average. And very quickly, just looking through the species, black vultures were low, turkey vultures were a little higher than the previous two years, but lower than the years before that. Ospreys were definitely low. Bald eagles were fairly good, not up as high as a couple of the record years we had a few years back, but higher than last year. Northern harriers were a bit on the low side, although we were coming off of a record season. Sharpshins were low. Cooper's hawks were more average. Red shoulders were really the one highlight coming through there at the end of the season with the record day and the record season total. You can see the previous record set two years ago was 789, and this year we had 870. Broadwings, 
around 3,700. Most of those came in one day and kind of saved the season. They were very low otherwise. So that Broadwing total ended up being a little bit lower than average, I would say. You know, we had a couple of really big seasons with 15,000, 11,000. So definitely on the low end. Red tails definitely were low as well this year, although higher than last year. Golden Eagles getting some in the second half of November brought us up to 12, which is probably slightly above average. Kestrels were low. Merlin seemed pretty in line with the past couple years. And Peregrines were pretty low with only 11, whereas we usually average around 20. So overall, the season was probably lower than average, but it didn't feel like a terrible season. I think overall, we ha all had a good time and felt like we had some really nice highlights throughout the season. And that's a wrap for the 2025 season of the Ashland Hawkwatch. Thank you so much to all of the volunteers and visitors who made it such a great season. I hope everyone had a great Thanksgiving, and I hope everyone has a great holiday season coming up. From Lycobirds, this is David Brown. Thanks for watching.